Now we will talk about the origin of magnetocrystalline anisotropy. Uh, this, the source of the anisotropy can be intrinsic or extrinsic. So it can be induced by some external mechanism or it can be due to uh, the structure of the material, just like the magnetocrystalline anisotropy. So that's the first point I want to make. Uh, the anisotropy is basically the direction dependence of magnetic properties and the direction dependence of the magnetic properties can be intrinsic as in the magnetocrystalline anisotropy or induced, induced by some external mechanism. So the anisotropies we have seen so far are intrinsic. So magnetocrystalline anisotropy is due to the structure of the material that is intrinsic. Um, so we can define the anisotropy energy in reference to the difference between energies of configurations where the material is magnetized along the easy axis and along the hard axis. So that's one way to uh, define the anisotropy energy. So the magnetocrystalline anisotropy energy is the energy difference between uh, magnetization along easy and hard directions okay so um, for example if you go back to our uh, previous case uh, ea is equal to zero ea is equal to k1 over four when k1 is negative this would be the minimum then ea equals to zero would be the maximum so you can see that I'm uh, referring to the anisotropy energy in reference to zero, which is the hard axis uh, energy, for example. So we, we can talk about the anisotropy energy this way. And it turns out that uh, this energy is just the energy required to overcome the spin orbit coupling. So the main source of magnetic anisotropy is spin orbit coupling. So this is just... the energy required to overcome spin orbit coupling. So how does that work? For example, uh, let's think about uh, having our um, orbits oriented like this in a chain like that and we have the uh, spins pointing uh, the magnetic moments pointing up um, and this is basically the easy axis and the orbits are uh, aligned along the easy axis uh, so this is one configuration. Now, if this is the easy axis, and if I now al align the magnetization along the hard axis, uh, so let's do it this way. So I have the magnetization pointing like this. Now this is the hard axis configuration, which I will call configuration two. The first configuration is favorable because this basically uh, it enables uh, far away electrons 
so the orbits uh, the electrons can be at times far away from each other so this is going to reduce electrostatic interaction energy on the other hand the second one uh, the higher uh, energy orbit the higher energy configuration is basically enabled by the spin orbit coupling so you can see that as the spins rotate the orbits will rotate even though the electrostatic interaction is not minimized in this configuration the spin orbit coupling is deriving the orbits uh, to be uh, in the perpendicular direction so do we have any evidence for this relationship between spin orbit coupling and anisotropy the answer is yes so if you look at uh, heavy rare earth metals uh, for example terbium like terbium uh, terbium has 4f uh, shell electrons 8 electrons it has an angular momentum L equals orbital angular momentum quantum number 3 so this material uh, has very high anisotropy magnetocrystalline anisotropy is very high in terbium on the other hand uh, if you look at gadolinium which has seven 4f electrons so it has l equals to zero there is no spin orbit coupling and no magnetocrystalline anisotropy or we can say weak streak, uh, spin orbit coupling and weak anisotropy that would be a better statement now there is a secondary effect so as a result of the spin orbit coupling we also have uh, we talked about this uh, quenching of orbital angular momentum for uh, 3d transition metals if you remember since the orbit is uh, also strongly coupled to the lattice because when you change the orbit the electronic environment in the crystal is changing so it is coupled to the lattice through the uh, crystal field the electric field was uh, what locked the orbits in position in the quenching of orbital angular momenta and uh, the same thing is true if you are able to move the orbit that means you are changing the crystal field uh, in an attempt uh, to rotate the spins so in an attempt to uh, rotate the spins we are rotating the uh, orbits and the orbits are basically coupled to the lattice so the lattice uh, basically responds to this as well so this results in changes of the crystal dimensions and that is called magneto magneto striction okay so uh, now I want to put a remark here for the uh, temperature dependence of anisotropy in all materials uh, we find that the anisotropy decreases with increasing temperature and this is expected because we are uh, breaking the coupling between the spin and the orbit by increasing the thermal energy 
and uh, near TC, the curry point, there is no preferred direction, there is no preferred orientation for the domains, domain magnetization. So they can point in any direction. So it's important that we have uh, the, for example, in uniaxial anisotropy, uniaxial anisotropy energy density, uh, Ku multiplied with V should be at least uh, 40 times the thermal energy for uh, stability in magnetic data storage, in magnetic bits, for example. So this is one application you can think of. Uh, in uh, the data storage industry, we have to make sure that the operation temperature uh, uh, is basically guaranteeing uh, at least 40 times KT anisotropy energy to hold the data um, and not cause it to randomly switch. And uh, so we talked about the origin of magnetocrystalline anisotropy. As I said, there is an intrinsic or extrinsic anisotropy. Uh, the intrinsic anisotropy is magnetocrystalline anisotropy. It is mainly to, due to spin orbit coupling. When we move the spins from the easy axis to the hard axis uh, direction, uh, we find that um, the uh, so basically the so let me make sure that this is the easy axis in which the magnetization points and this is the hard axis here and the orbit is coupled to the spin so it rotates with it uh, but there is a problem that we're changing the electrostatic interaction between the electrons in orbits so uh, one direction is more favorable over the other in order to reduce the electrostatic interaction so we have the concept of anisotropy easy axis and hard axis and this is verified in heavy earth, rare earth metals like terbium, uh, where we have a large uh, orbital angular momentum quantum number. There is a very large anisotropy. If you have zero orbital angular momentum number, quantum number, there is almost no magnetocrystal anisotropy, for example, in gadolinium. And uh, as a secondary effect, as we move the orbit, since the orbit is coupled to the crystal with the crystal field, it's the electric field environment, uh, so the dimensions of the crystal will also change in the magnetization process that is called magnetostriction. Uh, this anisotropy energy it will basically decrease with increasing temperature uh, and for example in magnetic data storage we have to make sure that the anisotropy energy density times the volume of the bit should be at least 40 thermal energy kt for stability of uh, our